intense awareness of impermanence. Meditate single-mindedly on death, all the time and in every circumstance. While standing up, sitting, or lying down, tell yourself, this is my last act in this world, and meditate on it with utter conviction. On your way to wherever you might be going, say to yourself, maybe I will die there. There is no certainty that I will ever come back. When you set out on a journey or pause to rest, ask yourself, will I die here? Wherever you are, you should wonder if this might be where you die. At night, when you lie down, ask yourself whether you might die in bed during the night or whether you can be sure that you're going to get up in the morning. When you rise, ask yourself whether you might die sometime during the day and reflect that there is no certainty at all that you will be going to bed in the evening. Meditate only on death, earnestly and from the core of your heart. Practice like the Kadampa Geshes of old, who were always thinking about death at every moment. At night they would turn their bowls upside down, thinking how the next day there might be no need to light a fire. They would never cover the embers for the night. However, just to meditate on death will not suffice. The only thing of any use at the moment, at the moment of death is the Dharma. So you will need to encourage yourself to practice in an authentic way never slipping into forgetfulness or loss of vigilance. Remembering always that the activities of samsara are transient and without the slightest meaning. In essence, this conjunction of body and mind is impermanent. So do not count on it as your own. It is only on loan. All roads and paths are impermanent. So whenever you are walking anywhere, direct your steps toward the Dharma. As it says in the condensed transcendent wisdom, if you walk looking mindfully one yoke's length in front of you, your mind will not be confused. So why would we meditate on death? And there's a variety of different uh, reasons. The ultimate impermanence, you know, is our physical form. Um, impermanence is one of the main teachings of the Buddha, which I do talk about in my new book, How to Gain Nothing from Buddhist Practice, available on Amazon. And you can read about it at gainnothing.com. And in the mind training series, Meditating on Impermanence is taught to us to break the attachment to outcomes and situations, mental states, afflictive emotions, and so forth. So meditation on death, from one point of view, is intended to help us really come uh, to terms with and be in touch with uh, the impermanence of all compounded phenomena. As the Buddha said, I was in a Zen uh, Dharma talk a couple of weeks ago, and the sensei said you know, he had read the last words of the Buddha, one of the one of the translations, and uh, you know when asked for teachings on his you know, deathbed, the Buddha said all compounded things will fall away. In other words, everything <laughs> everything is impermanent, and nothing lasts, and everything you know uh, will dissolve from its current state, from its appearance. So in, in that sense. We need to see, uh, you know, false evidence appearing real. We need to see the um, transitory nature in order to unhook, in order to give ourselves some space, you know, from that experience, so that we don't, you know, fight it or stick like glue to it, and so on. Um, and then, from a more advanced perspective. Um, the impermanence uh, or meditation on death is meant to to actually prepare us for death because from some uh, points of view and I don't think they talk about this at all in any of the sutra level teachings but certainly from the tantric and Dzogchen perspectives, Mahamudra perspectives the uh, 
transition of the bardo between life and death, or between death and life, as it were, um, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for enlightenment to fully realize our Buddha nature. There's that. And we can train in this. Um, there are ways to train. That's called POA practice either P-H-O-W-A or P-O-W-A. And you can look that up. Uh, there are teachers who, who teach on that a lot. Um, it is an advanced practice, requires transmission, and you know, probably, I don't know, many years of training. There are other ways uh, which are, are talked about in the higher, uh, in the Atta Yoga systems, which involve really just being in the state of our real nature uh, at the moment of death or soon thereafter and uh, being trained, being well trained in that. So that even if we you know, get hit by a bus, you know, shock, our consciousness has done so much practice at being in touch with our real nature, which in you know, a very real sense, it, it notices and liberates us, um, notices the impermanence of all compounded phenomena, including our consciousness. And, and I may be wrong, of calling consciousness a compounded phenomena, but I don't, I'm not going to try to split that hair. You can find out. But the the sense of uh, of seeing everything as a shimmering light and not a fixed permanent object, you know, frees us from that that need to hold on to it, uh, or avert it. So being aware of the state of rigpa or the real nature, or, the, or, or what is called Dzogchen, is uh, liberation. You know, if we can practice that, being in, li in the liberated space um, in our lifetime, very well, very often, then we can connect to the bardo state. So there are, the point is, the meditation on death is really, really big in Tibetan Buddhism. And I love that from words of my perfect teacher that I just read. <laughs> wherever I go, is this the place where I'll die? I mean, it's pretty awesome to be a practitioner and to think this way, you know. Um, it's not morbid at all. It's actually a way to, you know, not waste your fucking time and be, try to be more joyous in life. So, uh, that said, hey, I just celebrated 19 years clean and sober on Sunday, December 4th, 2016. And I'm only here because I'm not all there. And, you know, i um, been going through a lot going through a lot of uh, struggle, a lot of PTSD these past uh, few months. And, you know, it's been there forever. It's been there since I was a teenager, probably since I was a kid, but um, didn't know that's what it was. But it's come back full force just in, in regards to uh, you know, intimate relationship and just emotional distress and difficulties. It's a real, 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 uh, it's a roller coaster of the extreme uh, level. So, um, one thing that I want to share with you, and I'm going to write a full uh, ebook, a little bit, a little bit bigger than a white paper, but not probably not a full length book, but something very useful for you um, to talk about CBD, cannabidol, cannabidol, CBD, and I'll just share with you my personal experience on this. I was in high distress, and I mean no sleep, drive to Santa Fe, all my belongings in the car, not wanting to leave, but not knowing what else to do, getting there actually for the second time in 60 days and just being nuts, like no sleep, unable to think straight, just like sobbing, you know, really bad distress. And uh, I just want to add a point to this. You know, uh, uh, Zogar, is it Zogar? Consul Rinpoche, I think I'm pronouncing it right. I have a double check, but you know, he's a pretty famous Tibetan teacher in Colorado had a, uh, a quote that I read recently. It said the Dharma is, and Chogam Trumpa used to talk about this as well, but, you know, the Dharma is not meant to be, and Pema Chodron talks about it. You know, the Dharma is not your com comfort, com the Dharma is not your, um, and I'm paraphrasing it my way, but the Dharma is not your uh, comfy blanket. <laughs> you know, the Dharma is not made to make you feel better and be comfy cozy. The Dharma will turn your life upside down. And when you're on the slower, steadier, mindfulness-only kind of path where you just meditate, you don't, you know, you restrain from every experience and try to really control your body, speech, and mind, 
you know, this is the safer yet very much slower way. Um, and as, as I've mentioned in all my writings and podcasts and articles, I, I, I really come from the perspective of being an addict, being in recovery. And uh, I'm not, uh, I'm in a hurry. I, I want to get uh, past the suffering because it's just been so intense. And I'm raw, raw with experience, wide open I'm in my 20th year. So I'm feeling it all. And uh, decades of meditation. And um, this bulldog is just breathing. His name is Beefy. Oh, you can hear him breathing, sorry. But anyways, he's uh, sniffing the air out there. But um, I was in high distress and uh, feeling it. And I don't drink, I don't use, I don't take drugs, uh, I don't medicate. And therefore it was like being, ugh, just hellish. So um, my uh, buddy Buster, who's sober, uh, I think eight years now, I've known him since he got sober. It's like a therapist and all kinds of like knowledge about stuff so he says look open your mouth you're gonna try some CBD give me a 30 milligram dropper of it and uh, I passed out and um, it didn't make me pass out of it I, I passed out because I needed to pass out and when I woke up the next morning it was um, I, he says how do you feel and I said well I don't have PTSD I mean I woke up without that 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 dread and I've talked to a lot of people in recovery over the years about this and you know it, it's not unusual to um, you know take a cat nap in the evening or something afternoon and wake up in this shock in this horror you know the AA big book uh, literature talks about you know being an alcoholic and being in terror bewilderment frustration and despair and this is also the state that is possible I am here to testify you know, clean and sober clean and sober years it's still possible to feel this way without being drunk so this is the best way I can describe the post-traumatic stress and um, you know shortness of breath suicidal ideations uh, helpless hopeless thinking just total desperation unable to f focus is really bad so anyways I started taking the CBD and I bought some I had taken some before and I, I, I was really worried about jeopardizing my sobriety because it comes from the pot plant you know and pot was my drug of choice so I'm here as an advocate for uh, taking CBD because I take it and I'm clean and sober and it doesn't get you high and it has some properties so I'm going to talk a little bit about this I'm also putting a blog post up on Huffington Post that should be up today by the time you hear this, if not, within the next day or so. And we'll talk just a little bit about um, what CBD is. And I'm just pulling this off of some sites that I've done some research on. Cannabidol CBD is a non-psychoactive, read, non-psychoactive component of marijuana, yes, marijuana, that possesses a wide range of therapeutic benefits. When present in high quantities, CBD enhances THC's positive effects while negating many of the negatives. So there's a video that you can watch that shows a test case with a lady who takes a high CBD with low THC and a high CBD with THC, which is maybe more like a 30-50 or 50-50 concentration. And when she takes the THC, she is tripping. I mean, she's like out to lunch, uh, super high, laughing, crying. It's like, you know, so the interesting thing about the CBD, um, and I'll talk about the forms that it comes in and where you can find it. You can, do, you can go to bewellnessonline.com and uh, that's my site for wellness products. Um, you can send me an email, DarrenBLittleJohn at gmail.com, and I will, I will definitely uh, plug you in um, to the ones that I've researched and have used and uh, endorse. So, but, you know, I'll say that again at the end of the podcast. But this uh, uh, idea of uh, having, uh, you know, a little, a, a trace amount, like point, I forget if it's 0 0.01 or 0.1%, but at any rate, it's a trace amount of uh, THC and THC is the active ingredient in, in weed so um, that's the that's the thing that and let me just read this section because the THC is the thing that gets you high and the interesting thing to me is that and this I, I had this epiphany I was on the phone with my friend Danielle um, who you know also has a decade sober and is really really uh, you know, has a lot of reason to endorse this stuff as well um, 
and I realized I was laying there kind of, you know, half asleep trying to trying to calm down and come out of this really bad uh, session, uh, uh, episode rather that I was having. And she says, you know, I told her, look, you know, I uh, uh, am not hallucinating. Actually, the post hallucinogen perceptual disorder that I've had for since I was 18, right, and I'm 54. I mean, this would, if I had THC, it would be worse. Like, I would be tripping balls right now. I'd be having more hallucinations, you know. And I do have them more. If, uh, sometimes it pops up out of nowhere. Sometimes I see peripheral uh, vision, like my like my scope of vision is is uh, rippled on the outside of my my field of, of visual perception. It looks like glass is melting around my edges of my sight and so forth, and it kind of pulses in my head and it feels like there's a hum going on. So that happens like out of the blue for like I think maybe sunlight or maybe watching a big TV screen or something like that somehow somehow triggers it, but the typical you know hallucinations that I you know, pretty much have constantly like coming off of acid or coming off of you know weed PCP all the stuff I took as a kid you know this is always there never has not gone away since I was probably 17 18 years old so I've learned to live with it and you know it's uh, so the CBD didn't cause more it relaxed my mind and so the effect of it is that it relaxes your mind and it doesn't put you in a state of like stoniness um, you can get side effects depending on I don't know depending on I think how much how sensitive you are to THC if there's a little bit of a buildup uh, of of the uh, of the trace amounts in your blood maybe a diet sleep your any other medications you might be taking and so forth and be, please before you take any of this please check with your doctor um, and do some more research online but no uh, stoniness, no craving uh, chocolate chip cookies. Um, I kind of have forgetfulness anyways. So if I'm a little bit more mentally relaxed, I am a little bit more forgetful. So I'm, I'm kind of not sure if that's related. But I do pause uh, quite a bit and reflect, um, which, as I'll talk about, makes it a fantastic tool for meditation. So it's reducing my anxiety. You know, I'm taking it and I'm noticing that, okay, what if, there, if there was any worry about it having a THC effect, that's really um, uh, diminished. I mean, it's really non-existent. So, uh, but there is THC in it. It has to have that synthetic, that synthesis, but the, the, but the CBD molecules block the THC from entering into your brain's uh, bloodstreams uh, through your brain. So, I mean, it works together, but um, the high CBD is, is, uh, it's bred this way. It's bred for this reason. So, reading on here, it is an established scientific fact that cannabinoids, cannabinoids, and other components of cannabis can modulate many physiological systems in the human brain and body. Cannabinoids are chemical compounds that trigger cannabinoid and other receptors. So we have this. There's an endocannabinoid system in the human body, and I'll write about. I don't have time to go into that here, but I'll write about that in the in the book when it comes out. Um, but it's part of. It's in all mammals. It's in breast milk. Um, and it could be, um, you know, accessed or utilized, you know, just like dopamine, serotonin, you know, from good diet and exercise and so forth. But you know, in our culture, society, we don't, we don't always have that. We don't always grow up with that. So this actually helps. And I take, I actually take uh, omega threes every day, anyways, for my just for my workout regimen, my supplements. So the omega threes, I think, work really well with the uh, CBD. So. Um, more than a hundred cannabinoids have been identified in the marijuana plant. Of these marijuana molecules, tetrahydrocannabinol (THC) and cannabidol (CBD) have been studied most extensively. In addition to cannabinoids being uh, uh, produced by the plant, there are endogenous cannabinoids such as anandamide and 2-AG. And anandamide is uh, there was an Indian uh, doctor who coined that term, and ananda means bliss in. <laughs> In uh, you know Yogananda, I mean you know, it means bliss in uh, in Sanskrit. So interesting. Um, and these occur naturally in the mammalian brain and body, as well as synthetic cannabinoids created by pharmaceutical researchers. And the synthetic ones aren't as effective in my research. Uh, they're much slower CBD. So you basically you get this from people who grow pot, and they either grow it for um, purposes of selling THC products, CBD products, or both. Uh, some of the products are, are uh, manufactured um, 
from hemp. The CBD is extracted from the hemp only, which is, I guess, the stock. Um, and some are whole plant, which includes the flowers. So if you get some of the ones that I use, um, which I can, I can definitely get you connected with the people uh, where you can get this. Um, this one is made from the whole plant and it's made from the ACDC strain, which is a very high potency one, but it's, it's bred um, and cloned. It's the exact same uh, uh, genetic structure each time. And the process is the same, although the batch concentrations, there are a lot of factors, uh, that kind of stuff varies. I shake it up before I take it and I take it in the, the olive oil or the coconut oil uh, uh, format. But you can also, I guess you can vape it. I'm not a vapor. Um, I don't know how that works. I, I couldn't tell you, but you can have a lozenge, um, hold it under your tongue for um, a few minutes and uh, you're good to go. Um, so let me just finish this little section here on what it is. Extensive preclinical research, much of it sponsored by the U.S. government, indicates that CBD has potent, and this is the part I want you to hear, potent anti-tumoral, antioxidant, antispasmodic, antipsychotic, anti-convulsive, and neuroprotective properties. CBD directly activates serotonin receptors, causing an antidepressant effect as well. Hello? Uh, there's a guy in, in AA that's got like 30 years and he's like chronically just, he's one of those really acute depressed guys, right? Well, he, uh, I, ga I gave him the pamphlet that my therapist gave me for CBD and said, just look into it, man, you know, because I think it might be able to help you. And so I can, yeah, I can go into this in more detail as, as, as I write about it and so forth. But note, antipsychotic properties. Um, I tried antipsychotics for my, um, uh, hallucinations the horrible horrible feeling um, bad side effects and it didn't help so I mean I just felt crazy when I took those but anti-convulsive I mean you know the uh, Depakote which I used to take for um, the kind of bipolar 2 ish kind of uh, manic manic -y kind of states um, it's anti-convulsive so and neuroprotective so it helps our neurons connect to each other and i've spoken to a couple of neuroscientists we've had a one of my little yoga buddies is like this little girl you know i just help her with her handstand and i'm like so what do you do she's like, oh i'm a neuroscientist I'm like, nice i'm like so what about cbd so you know we're chatting um and another guy uh, who i drove in my uber who was here at the neuroscience conference and uh, others, you know. So there's a lot that can be said about neuroplasticity and growing new brain cells. And you know, it's, it's harder to grow new brain cells as you get older, but really strengthening the connections between the good ones, the good pathways, the ones that like help us feel better, you know, like after a great workout. So um, that's what I think they mean by the neuroprotective properties. So uh, will you get high from taking CBD? My, my experience, no. You, you can get some side effects. And this, the side effects that I've experienced, and again, I want to reiterate, talk to your doctor. Um, but the side effects that I experienced, a little bit of heart rate elevation for about the first 15, 20 minutes, depending on how much of it I take. And I take a dropper, and a dropper is 30 milligrams. And I take about a fifth of a dropper. So I'm, I'm guessing, I'm eyeballing. I shake it up really well, but... I'm eyeballing it. it's probably five milligrams at a time and um, sometimes I've taken about half a dropper maybe um, 10 12 to 15 milligrams or so if I'm really peaking like if there's like a you know there's like a scene going on that I've got to be chill like I really need to control my body speech and mind this one I might I haven't yet but I might take a 30 milligram and I know my friend takes 30 milligrams three times a day and um, I think there's a point of diminishing returns with it anyways. I don't think you can take too much. I, I kind of get a little bit of headache if I if I get too tired and stuff. So um, I just take a little bit. But uh, heart rate elevation, a little bit of drowsiness can happen. So be careful driving or maybe don't drive with it. And a little bit of dry mouth. Um, so when I take hot yoga, so I take a couple, I take a, 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 a small amount, a couple drops before yoga. Sometimes I'll well, the past week I've done 22 classes in 11 days so just getting through my sobriety birthday um, and so forth but you know I'm, I'm drinking buckets of water in yoga whereas normally I wouldn't but I don't even mind stopping and drinking water in class which I normally will not do too much I'll do some but I mean I don't mind pausing and just like guzzling water because even though most people won't do that just because I know that I've got the CBD and I need to replenish and not get dehydrated 
Um, as I mentioned, you can watch that video online of, uh, of the, the THC versus CBD uh, effects, and it's a pretty, uh, pretty dramatic effect. Okay, so I just uh, got a, a job uh, doing a, kind of a warehouse thing just to kind of supplement my income a little bit. And there's a drug test, and I was thinking, oh my God, am I going to, 19 years sober, am I going to test positive? And the research I did says that you'd have to take one to 2,000 milligrams a day, like for a while. And even then, you probably wouldn't even get a blip on the uh, on the re on the test. And my friend has done a test on herself, and and she she uh, uh, said it came back negative. I think she takes a lot more than I do. Um, so in terms of what kind to get and so forth, like I mentioned, you can go with the hemp based kind. You can go with the ACDC, the Charlotte's Web. Those are also used for medical marijuana purposes. So um, you have to kind of trial and error with it a little bit. I say error, error on the side of caution. Um, but if you have PTSD, like I do, if you have social anxiety disorder, if you, um, you know, have a racing mind, you, you can take this and get uh, some relief, uh, in, in my opinion. I'm not a doctor, you know, but I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm always, I'm, I'm using myself as a case study, you guys, and I'm always sharing with you what works for me, and I've been doing that for a really long time. So. This is my experience. You can't really argue with it. Uh, your your mileage may vary. So I take a little dropper, a little few drops before going to the Zen Center, and I do an hour of Zazen. And let me tell you, when I went to Santa Fe the first time, and my heart was pounding through my mouth, and I could not calm it down, man. Then I would sit for an hour at the beautiful Upaya Center there, and then uh, two hours later, I'd be I would be out of my mind. So much pain came up. Doing it with CBD, it is quicker to go straight into meditation. You don't have to fight it for a half an hour to calm down. You go right into it. You really focus. Maybe use a little bit of breathing technique to get started. And I'll talk about this in more detail and give you instructions. You know, as I as I perfect a system. But you know, this is what I do. I take a little before yoga. I take it before even going to like a boot camp, like cardio. The thing is, with the cardio, you, you it affects your central nervous system. So you may be a little short of breath when you start. Um, after for me, after one set or about five to eight minutes of of uh, high intensity interval training on the treadmill or whatever. Uh, the shortness of breath goes away. It does not diminish my energy at all. It just feels like I may be short of breath, which I may associate with having diminished energy, but it's not really diminished. So um, that's how I use it. And it takes sometimes, I guess, it, it could take an, up, up to an hour for this to take effect. I mean, I usually notice it within 30 minutes, so I might take it right before yoga, and then by the time I get to Shavasana at the end of class, I mean, I'm chilling. Or I might take it half an hour before yoga. But I, I also take like um, different supplements, you know, maca and uh, cinnamon and my vitamins, sometimes L-carnitine and so forth for, you know, for the energy and stamina of doing the workouts. So it's a little bit of a combination uh, thing for me, but I won't get into that too much right now. Just wanted to let you know what CBD is and, 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 and share with you that I use it for my meditation and my meditation is deep. It's deeper than I've been doing Zen for 25 years. I go regularly to the center and um, it helps me so much you guys really there was a guy online who's got you know long-term sobriety and he was really having a hard time with the PTSD I said look man get some CBD well what's that well look I've got to do a thing where I can explain this to everybody the podcast and the article are the first step in that just to get it out there and let people know if you want to get some you want me to point you in the right direction you can email me go to be wellness online and look GainNothing.com for the new book. Please buy the book. I mean, I put a couple grand into this to publish it myself. Um, the audiobook should be up uh, before before uh, the next week or so. Definitely a couple weeks before Christmas. It's an amazing um, narrator who did it. She sounds fantastic. The print book is there. Amazon says not in stock, but it will sh it will print and ship within like a day. Um, if you can write a review and t send me the review that you wrote or, or let me know that you did I can um, you know put you in a random uh, drawing for some of the cool uh, swag that you've got up on gainnothing.com which are uh, coffee cups and t-shirts really cool gain nothing t-shirt it's from the book cover love it 
Anyways, you guys, you can't pay for Amazon reviews, so I'm not offering to do that. I'm just saying, yeah, I can help you out with putting you in a random drawing to express my appreciation for people who do those honest reviews. So um, that's it for me, you guys. I'm in my 20th year, clean and sober, and let's keep trudging. Adios.